If you're looking for a way to set up your laser to do the same object over and over, then you're gonna to wanna to build a jig. Jigs are invaluable in my laser business, and I use it for so many different things, from coasters to hammers and more. So if you are looking for how to do that, whether you've got a diode laser or a CO2 laser, I've got my Monport 80 watt right here that we're gonna be doing it on. Uh, but again, it'll work on any laser and it is so simple to do. It's set up with absolute coordinates. So if you don't know how to use that, I'll walk you through step-by-step -step on how to do that as well. And it's something that you will be able to use to just improve your workflow. It will improve your accuracy, help you to really nail the positioning of things and do it repeatedly time and time again. This is not a one-time setup and one-time throw away. It's something that you're gonna be able to reuse again and again. So without further ado, my name is Patrick. This is Created Workshop and let's dive into the video on building a jig for your laser. Okay, so we're gonna start by turning the laser on and letting it home. And as you can see, I've got just a piece of material in here. Uh, this is 1 8 Baltic birch. So that's what we're gonna use for this. And once we have everything home, going to move it and zero it. Um, you always wanna make sure that you're zeroed whenever you're doing a project like this. It will help the engrave and the cut come out so much better. Uh, I have an automatic focus. Uh, if you don't, then just go ahead and zero. I will have future videos showing you how to do ramp tests and set your focus, especially with an autofocus later. Um, that'll, that'll come out later, probably next year, uh, if you're watching this shortly when it's coming out. But now that we are set up with our material, our thickness is in there, um, everything is ready to go. It's time to jump over to Lightburn and get the actual graphic design. So now in Lightburn, we're gonna take a look at the overall design. Here you can see I've already got my design made. It's just a couple squares, some text, and the bullseyes. So I will show you how to make these bullseyes, but essentially they are two lines and a circle. I make my circle at 12.7 millimeters. You can make it at whatever size you want, but the easiest way to do it is to start with your circle. So you can see I'll paste that right here. And then we will use our line tool that's over on the side and come back. And as you are going around the circle, you will eventually see kind of crosshairs come up. That means that it's gonna to snap to the middle. If you hold shift, it will keep your line straight and then you'll see the other set of crosshairs when you've reached the other side. I'll make these red so that way they're part of the, the red layer, but that is how you make the crosshair. It's so simple and you'll use that trick in other designs down the road. But this is it. I've got the red as my engrave layer for the crosshairs, blue as engrave layer for the text, and the black as my cut layer to cut everything out. You can see the settings that I'm using on the side as well. Um, so if you're interested and you have a similar 40 watt machine, then you can try these settings out and see if they work for you. But I do have air assist with 30 PSI. Okay, so now we've got it designed in Lightburn. It's time to jump into the actual cutting. Um, I just wanna go over a couple things real quick. When you make it, you wanna make sure that your uh, inserts that you're putting into the template are ever so slightly bigger than what you're gonna be putting in. And when I say ever so slightly, I'm talking maybe half a mil to a millimeter. Uh, you don't want it to be overly big, otherwise it's gonna be hard to center up. You don't want it to be exact exact unless you are making the item uh, because you wanna have a little bit of variance in there. So I typically go for about a half a mil to a mil oversized, and then I use the uh, grid array tool to space everything out evenly. And from there, it is ready to cut. Honestly, it's such an easy design. Something like this takes just a minute or two to set up. I know that I showed you a file I already had set up, um, but that's just because it was there. And it's such a simple file to deconstruct. You type the text across the top, you draw the squares, draw the outer square. I showed you how to draw the, um, the bullseye, and then we'll, we'll use the bullseye as well, because once we're done with this template, I'm gonna show you how to use it. We're gonna take a set of four coasters, we're gonna put it in there and engrave it, and I will show you just how well they line up. So as you can see, we've got the uh, laser head positioned, and I will move you a little bit so you can still see it. 
you can't see the very, very bottom of it, but we're gonna go ahead and frame everything out. So I will select it all up here. And we will go ahead and do the framing. We're gonna go from your user origin, bottom left. So we should be good here. And now it is time to turn our laser tube on and hit start. Okay, so we will move the laser head out of the way and then take a look inside. You can see it engraved and cut out right here. All those pieces just stay in there. And this is our template. The engraving is nice and dark. The crosshatch is also nice and dark. That's exactly what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the plywood out of here and we will go, go on to the next step. Now, this step requires a little bit of back and forth with light burn and with the laser. So we're gonna start by just putting in the laser, or the, the template, and I'm gonna use some neodymium magnets uh, to hold it down. I'm gonna swap out these magnets down here so I can have one on each corner. This Baltic birch has a little bit of warp to it, so we're just gonna set it like this. That way it'll help us get everything uh, set up in the next step. So now we're gonna jump on over to Lightburn and I will show you what we're going to do next. You'll wanna start by selecting everything and making it a tool layer. And then we're gonna go ahead and group it so nothing moves uh, independently from each other. At least for now, we're gonna change that in a minute. Change your laser from user origin to absolute coordinates. And then what you're gonna do is scroll in, choose your laser position tool, and pick the center of one of the crosshairs. Now, we are off, as you can see. And if you have a light burn camera, then you might be able to line this up pretty easily. Um, I have one, but I want to show you how to do this without that. So we're gonna take our magnets off, and then we're going to come over here and line that up essentially as best we can with our laser, with this center. So we've already zeroed our material, which is a necessary feature here. You have to have your uh, red dot laser perfectly aligned with where your laser beam is gonna hit in order for all of this to line up. But once we click the center and light burn and we line up the center here, we can then go back to light burn and click on the center of the other crosshair. That's why you put two, and they just have to be in the same spot in light burn as they are on the piece. Mm -hmm. Honestly, they don't even have to be in the same, they don't have to be you know, as co-planar as I made mine. I just do that for <laughs> aesthetic purposes. Uh, but now we're going to move this down so it's level, and that looks good. We can now put our other magnet right there. And then this part isn't necessary, but whenever I finish aligning the second one, I always go back and verify I did not mess up the alignment on the first crosshair. So I'll go back over here and light burn and click the middle. And I'll scoot that down ever so slightly. And now we're aligned. So we're gonna jump back into Lightburn and finish up uh, aligning our different graphics that we're gonna be putting on these slate coasters. Now, once you are back into Lightburn, you're gonna wanna take and ungroup everything so you can regroup just kind of the core components. And then we are going to not group the internal squares. That's because we want to lock that shape. 
What that means is each individual square you will still be able to align to. When it's all grouped together, you can't do that. It also means that nothing's gonna move. So here I'm selecting the graphics that we're going to engrave and I am centering them in each one of these squares and I don't have to worry about moving anything because again, the shape is locked. Now I typically will size these at about 85 to 89 millimeters uh, for each one, sometimes a little bigger or smaller depending on the specific graphic. As you can see here, I'm shrinking the love graphic just a little bit so that way it'll fit better. And that is gonna do it for here. I'm gonna jump over into my cut library and choose my slate setting, which you can see on the screen is 300 millimeters a second at 20% power. Now we are ready to engrave. So now that we have the file set up in Lightburn, we've blocked everything down so none of our components move. We've centered up all of our graphics. It's time to move the laser head out of the way. We're going to get these lined up inside of here. And now I'm gonna drop the bed a little bit. So that way nothing runs into the coasters because we need to make sure that we zero against the coasters. Don't forget that because remember you are currently zeroed against the plywood and you're not gonna be engraving on plywood. And now we can close our lid. We can then get ready to go. I've already got the file set up like you remember and now it's just time to select and hit start. Everything is going to work perfectly centered at this point. Um, might be a tiny, tiny bit variance, uh, but that's typically just gonna come from how well you align the coaster with your template. I also use this for another template. I'll show you at the end of the video for a product that I make on the CNC. It's available in my, on my website if you're interested. Um, but it, is, uh, it helps me to get all of my task card holders aligned and ready to go. But enough of that. I will let you just enjoy watching the engraving happen. Okay, so let's take a look at the coasters. We'll flip this up, move the laser head back, and these look fantastic. Now, whenever you're working with slate, you're gonna wanna take a air compressor, will just uh, really richen up the engrave. I don't use any finish on my slate coasters. Um, I feel like that would kind of defeat the purpose of a coaster and make it, or it's not as, uh, it doesn't absorb as well. But these came out great and I'm gonna bring you in here to kind of take a closer look to see how well they centered up. So you can see that these are very well centered. Uh, because of how natural slate is, there's a little bit of like not perfect perfect, but that's not because of the template. That's just because, as you can see, like this one, the, uh, the slate on the top comes down this low and it doesn't come quite as low there. But overall, these are pretty perfectly centered and that's all thanks to our jig. Now I told you I'd show you another one of my templates that I use. This is for my task cards that I make, my task card trays. 
Um, and I've got this little nub right here to kind of let me know which side gets aligned where. But overall, it's made the exact same. I've got the uh, bullseyes, I have it labeled, and I put it in the, the laser, and I run it exactly the same. It's such a simple thing to make a template like this and use it to align your stuff. I know you're gonna find it's gonna be something that you use all the time. I even have one for uh, circular coasters over here. I'll go ahead and grab that to show you what that looks like. Uh, and it looks exactly the same. Um, here it is. And this, obviously, I did a little bit of a bad job up there. I had my settings off, but it's still cut out just the same. So functions just the same and works great you can use any substrate to make it um you can use mdf like i've got uh the task car tray made out of you can use plywood like we use today um really whatever you have on hand you can use quarter inch eighth inch doesn't matter it as long as you can cut through it it will work and that's gonna do it for this video i hope you really enjoyed it if you're wondering how to do some other stuff with your laser i've got a video on how to connect your uh, your mon port or really any ruida controlled laser to Lightburn over ethernet i've got an unboxing of the big mon port laser when that arrived just a few weeks ago and be sure to uh, check those out like this video if you liked it if you didn't there's a button down there for that too if you've got any questions or suggestions for future videos leave me a comment below i would love to interact with you down there um, and i want to bring you content that you want to see thanks again for watching don't forget to subscribe and i'll catch you in the next one